Hi guys and welcome back to another ant world video. Today we will be focusing on a particular species, to be specific a dentomachus, and we will be discussing its features and also sharing some tips on how best to keep them. Before we head into the video, be sure to subscribe, like and hit that bell icon. The ants who belong to the family Odontomachus are also called as trabjo ants due to their highly distinguishable mandibles. Trabjo ants are exceedingly popular among ant keepers all around the world. They have been featured in many of the leading ant keeping YouTube channels and as a result the popularity. This clip shows a tiny colony of trabjo ants and you can observe their distinguishable mandibles easily. Trap joints belong to the genera Pornera. The ants are equipped with two defense mechanisms, their mandibles and stingers. Mandibles are mouth parts that act, act like teeth for the ants. These mandibles will close shut if the trap hairs are disturbed. This is a trap joke queen ant and you can easily recognize the specialized mandibles. Now let's get to the fun part. The first step in having your own trabjo colony is catching a queen. Find out if trabjo ants are native to your area. Try out this website antmaps.org which has all the species that has ever been recorded area wise. Another method is connecting with other ant keepers. Plus you could learn a lot more other things from them. If you guys have any queries regarding this topic or any other topic, be sure to contact me through gmail at antworld.india at gmail.com or Instagram. Both accounts in the description. Now, if there aren't trap joints native to your area, well keep searching, maybe you'll find some. If there are trap joints in your area, look under logs or stones right after a rain. Trap joints really love humidity and humid places like under wet logs will attract queens. Once you have caught a queen, now comes the question, in what kind of setup should I keep her? Trap joints should be kept in a test tube setup with some wet substrate in. However, the inclusion of substrate will impair clarity, but it's best for the queen that you do so. Plus, be sure to clean up one side so you can have a partial view in. If you are a beginner or have kept a few colonies slash queens, be sure to find yourself a feeder culture before you attempt keeping these ants. Trap joints have a tight diet as many of them are carnivorous and consume only proteins that is insects. As a result, a large number of insects are required to throughout the process. Insects that are smaller than the ants like termites or springtails are readily accepted by the ants. Now comes the hard part, the process of getting a trap joe queen ant from the developing stage to the developed stage is considered to be very hard. The ants have to be fed often, if possible daily. The reason for this is that the trap joe queens, if are not comfortable, she will retort to cannibalism. That is, they will eat their own brood and even workers. Keep in mind to humidify the sub substrate weekly and with luck you will have a colony of trap joans in a few months. Now let's get to the care for a colony. This is my colony of trap joans. They have about 10 workers and are currently nested in a dirt setup. Dirt setup just consists of preferably a transparent container with wet soil. It is not mandatory at all but I think that trap joans do better in dirt setup better than traditional ne nests and outworlds. I have made a few mistakes in creating such a setup. There's no holes in the setup and to move an colony out, it will be very difficult. We will not have to water the setup for a long time. Moving this colony out will take a long time and thus I decided to move them out to another setup. The setup I decided to move them out was a combination of both a traditional nest and a dirt setup as an outworld. 
This dirt setup will only have a thin layer of dirt and thus preventing the ants from nesting there. This is their current setup. It's a vertical for Macadia. They have not started to settle in and will do so in a couple of days. I've added in a bit of substrate before adding the ants in. If you're keeping them in such a setup, it is advisable and recommended to do so in order to increase the humidity in the setup. The more the humidity in the nest, the more comfortable it is for the ants. During the first few hours after the move, the ants had started to nest in the outer world, so I had to change a few things up and lessen the thickness of the soil. Here they are in their chamber. They are nesting well and are comfortable and have started to settle in. They have a couple of larvae and a pupae. They are a bit low on brood, but I'm sure they will make up for it in the coming days. Getting back to the care for a colony, it's pretty simple. You just got to keep feeding them and they will grow just fine. Brood boosting is also another method. You can try getting brood from other mature colonies and giving it to these guys which will help them grow much faster. I have done this in the developing stages of this colony. And as a result, you can see that some workers are bigger than the other. If you follow all the rules and give them tons of care, it won't be much long until you have a colony, a nice colony of these guys on your hands to take care of. They are such a treat to keep once they are in the colony phase and are always active. Also, they provide entertainment when you feed them as, of course, they are pretty aggressive. So guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you found it informative and found some piece of information from it. And I hope it will add on to your ant keeping knowledge. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Thank you for watching.